Hello everyone. Thank you for joining this session. My name is Sargam Tiwari and I am the marketing head at Tech Job Fair. Today we have our special guest speaker Lisa Jens. She is CEO and founder of Lisa Jens Coaching. Lisa is a, running a coaching program on resume writing, mock interview and salary negotiation that helps international professionals seeking a job in Germany. And today we will be talking about how to find jobs in Germany. So let's welcome Lisa. Hi Lisa, how are you doing? Hi Sagam, thank you very much for having me. I'm fine. How are you? It's really really great of you to invite me to the tech talk today. Thank you, thank you, Lisa. Uh, we are pleased to having you today. So, uh, Lisa, before moving forward to the topic, uh, would you like to tell us about yourself, uh, your work experience, and how you are helping job seekers around the globe? Yes, lovely. I would love to. So um, I've been working in HR, so human resources, for more than 10 years. That's basically my background. I have studied management and economics as well as international vocational education. It sounds really difficult, but it's really not. It's my passion and it's how I learned to be a really, really good HR manager. But as you know, with regards to HR, there is a lot of stuff included, like recruitment, learning and development, and also some sort of personal planning. Like um, when a company wants to uh, increase or grow their, their staff, they need to plan how many people and what kind of talents they need. So I'm basically, uh, I have experience in all of these fields. And then at some point I moved to England and that was basically in 2015 and I tried to get a job there. And it was really difficult for me, even though I had lots of experience in the past about how to apply in Germany. So when I'm applying for a job in Germany, I get invited to job interviews. But then in England, I didn't get invited and I didn't know what was going on. So that was really, really difficult until I got a career coach who told me what I was doing wrong. So England is completely different in the application process compared to Germany. And that's what I've realized over years. Germany is really, really, um, that we love directness. We love our bureaucracy and standards. And for example, on our CVs, it's still very common that we have a picture and all of these things, which is completely different if you're applying for a job in the English speaking world. So from that experience, I knew I wanted to help people with the knowledge and experience that I have being an HR lady, having recruited thousands of people for other companies, screened application documents, conducted job interviews. I just simply wanted to share that with everybody who is from outside of Europe, who's from outside of Germany, to basically fill the, the gaps that we have in our labor market here in Germany. And what is very, very close to my heart is that I want to have equal opportunities for everybody. I want to have fairness when it comes to applying for a job. And that's what I've seen, what is a, still a huge problem, because there are so many people who are applying from outside of Germany and don't know what our standards are. And that's what my job is about. So as Job Coach Germany, I support people with their writing a resume, writing cover letters, preparing for a job interview through mock job interviews. But also sometimes there are people who want to change their careers and they don't even know where they are heading to. And that's when a lot of mindset work needs to go into practice. And we're doing some exercises on finding out what is my ideal job? What do I really want to do with my life? And Obviously, um, then you also need some preparation with regards to um, salary negotiation and finding out what's the right work contract. So all of these questions are basically covered when you're working with me. And all of the people who are following me through social media or also um, through, through the newsletter, for example, they get help through that as well. So it's not just that you always have to work directly with me. You can already learn a lot if you're following me or following Tech Jobsware so that we can uh, together help all of the candidates that are out there to find their job or their dreams. 
Right, correct. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, great work, I mean, you are doing. And uh, because helping uh, candidates uh, in today's time, you know, uh, whether it is uh, writing tips and resume writing and the profile building, it is definitely a very good work uh, for job seekers. And uh, so, uh, as you know, there are uh, thousands of professionals who come from different countries to Germany, right? If we uh, specifically talk about Germany for jobs uh, in tech field, right, for technology yeah. industry. So how difficult it is for someone to find jobs uh, there and uh, from uh, which type of process they have to had to go through? Yeah. So normally, if you haven't done any research regarding applying for a job in Germany, it can be very, very overwhelming. It looks like a very big problem that job seekers are facing. And um, this is also a very big hurdle for the German job market because here in Germany, we have a huge lack of skilled workers. So I remember two years ago, there, were, there was a lack of 165,000 people per year from outside of the EU that we were looking for. That was prior to the pandemic. Now with the pandemic, it, this lack of skilled people that we need has increased to 390,000 per year from outside of Europe, right? And now they are expecting um, over a million, over a million people that we will need in order to fill our gaps, in order to stay productive, productive in Germany. And as you know, the IT market, data, tech, engineering, the, I mean, engineering is something that Germans are living and that we have been living for, for ages, right? Everybody thinks of great engineering and they're thinking of Germany, but we cannot fill all of these gaps. So we need people from outside of our market to attract them. But there is this des discrepancy because the, the internationals don't even know where to start. So a lot of information is out there that you first need to organize your visa or you uh, first need to find a flat. You first need to come to Germany to, to start this process. But what I always try to engage people in, that they can start their job search already from wherever they are. Whether they are already in Germany, great. They have even a, a better advantage because it shows more commitment that the employer can see this person is already in Germany. So let's let's they want to stay here so let's find a job but it's also very helpful if you are abroad and start searching for a job the visa is something that can come second so first of all you want to search on the right platforms you want to search on the right job boards you want to search for jobs that are really designed for engineers uh, for the entire field of tech innovation and um, design, for example. And there are more than 1,600 job boards in Germany alone. You don't want to screen all of these job boards, right? Because it's just overwhelming. At some point, you just get lost and it's really uh, boring <laughs> to go through all of them. So you need to make sure that you are sticking to the right platform that is designed around tech, around engineering, right? So um, that's that's something that I would always recommend people to do. So search for, for the right job boards in your field and not just, um, for example, just using LinkedIn, for example, or Facebook, but specialized for the tech field yeah so something like what i know from the collaboration with tech jobs fair is that there is higher tech talent this is a perfect platform for example to apply for jobs and find jobs through that that platform and it makes it a lot easier for job seekers to find a job actually rather than going through this process step by step applying 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 writing applications over and over again but that's the first step that you need to do. Search for a job, apply for the job, and then the company can come next and support you, for example, with a relocation package. 
even if the company doesn't do it. Yeah, sometimes companies are not willing to give you an, a relocation package. Sometimes they are not uh, willing to help you find a flat. They are not willing to offer you a, a German course. But it's very important for people to ask for it because sometimes the companies don't even know, oh, yes, of course we can offer that to you. We didn't even think about that. But with a German tax system, it's even easier for the German companies to use this expense on their tax return. So it's a win-win situation, but nobody ever knows that or talks about that. So a relocation package, the visa and the, um, the German course are things that can or might be covered through the company or at least parts of it. So this is something that you can think about later. Yeah, and they can support you. Sometimes the companies are so big that they even have a portfolio of flats available that they just offer to their employees. So you should keep that in mind. Yeah. And just one more thought on that question. In 2020, 1st of March 2020, uh, the German government passed a new law that is called the Skilled Immigration Act. And that increased the support for companies to attract talent from outside of Europe to make it a lot easier yeah and not having that much bureaucratic uh, work to do anymore which is why it's a lot easier now to organize a visa for internationals who want to come to Germany and work here so uh, yeah so while i think as a job seeker uh, applying in germany so language barrier can be a uh, you know big question from everyone right uh, as yes. you have mentioned so also uh, is it like uh, important for every company to you know they have to uh, there there would be if any uh, skill test or uh, any type of uh, communication test they have to pass through Yeah, great question. And that is something that I am always very worried about. So you need to be very careful if you are applying from abroad and get some sort of relocation coach or some, some sort of help who is not in Germany and doesn't know how the situation is here right now. Because a lot of people always say, you can only come to Germany if you have a German level of B2, which is really difficult. Yeah. So, um, and it's not, simply not true. You, you also can come to Germany and find a job that is English speaking. I know a lot of people who start out their jobs in English and the, the amount of jobs that is offered in English uh, is increasing. So like five years ago, there were still just a, a small amount of jobs that were offered in, in English and a lot of jobs that were offered in, in German. But nowadays it's different, especially in tech, IT, and this sort where you are working a lot, where you're working with computers. <laughs> every job <laughs> so um but in this field especially in i in the it world i see it very often that a lot of people are here and working here and have been working here for more than 10 years and don't need any german whenever i go to berlin as soon as i go out of the train i switch from german to english because the entire city is speaking in english this is how it actually works and the same is especially for the Munich area when you're working in IT there. However, if you are searching for a job in a smaller village, remoter areas, I would definitely recommend for you to learn German. And learning German as, at least until level A1, 2 or A2, 1 would be also very beneficial for your job interview because if you can do your applicants pitch so saying where you're from who you are and a little bit about your background in german will be a great benefit a huge advantage because it shows the german employer that you're willing to learn the language and then you can leave the decision to the employer when they say you need german they can pay for your german course that's my opinion <laughs> Correct, correct. So, I mean, uh, it's not necessary to learn German, but yes, uh, if you learn a basic thing, I think so that would uh, make a very big impact to the employees, right? Yes. Definitely, of course. And it will, obviously, it's not just about your work life when you're coming to Germany, but you also want to make sure that you're finding friends. And maybe, I mean, you're coming to Germany, you want to have German friends as well, and not just international friends, because that's what normally 
yeah, I mean, when I'm living abroad, for example, I normally stick with internationals as well because you're going through the same kind of cultural experiences as well. Sometimes you have cultural, like cultural shocks or like hurdles that a person from that country doesn't understand. So it's always good to have international friends, but you want to have German friends. And in order to crack our nutshell, it's really important that you learn German because that warms our hearts. And once you have made a German friend, once you've won a German friend for yourself, it's really, really hard to get rid of us. But in the first beginnings, if you're just speaking English, it also seems to us, okay, maybe this person isn't really interested in our culture. Maybe we don't open up that much. Yeah. So it's definitely, especially for your personal life, a um, yeah, great advice to learn German. Thank you. Uh, so moving further, so as you have mentioned, you know, about the engineering jobs also, and uh, we are also talking about the tech, uh, tech jobs also. So do you see uh, uh, any special pattern of behavior in tech or engineers during the job application process? Yes, and that is a very good question because um, this is also a topic that is very close to my heart. I also have a little bit of background. So the, the HR background that I have is in automotive and in the IT industry. So I have worked with companies in the automotive industry and also in IT. So I have seen and screened and conducted interviews with engineers and with um, developers and uh, so on. And what I always see is that they are brilliant. Really, you cannot say how... Um, how talented these people are. You have learned so much in university. You've probably earned a lot of experience through uh, first jobs, or even if you haven't done any jobs before. But the this, this study program, studying, for example, mechanical engineering or anything that's related to IT is really, really difficult. Yeah, so I would, um, if I were to compare my studies in my master's in international vocational education to mechanical engineering, I don't think that I would have passed it. I mean, okay, it's not my my interest, but it would be very, very difficult for me, you know, and people in Germany also know that, that these fields are very difficult to study and that those are fields that are in high demand of, of, of qualified people. But those people who are qualified often don't know that. So these engineers or tech talents don't really know how talented they are, which is why they are a little bit, you would say, introverted. So they, they are a little bit um, shy when they are trying to, not everybody, of course. Yeah, there are people out there who are really, they can sell themselves and it's really easy going for them. But most of them, and it doesn't matter whether that's internationals or Germans, in this field, I see it very often that they are very... Um, they are not that out there. They are not so much into your face, not that loud and not saying I'm so good. I can do all of these things, but they are very, very humble and very modest, which is very nice, but it doesn't really help with, for example, salary negotiation or all of the different things that you want to have in your work contract. So here I have often seen when people have worked with me, through the push that they get through me and the way how we are preparing through finding out what's the salary standard, what's the salary band in that particular city, in that particular field. Oh, that's what I can expect. Then they go and get what they want and which can be tw twice, triple or even four times as much as they have earned before. So, but this is something that they wouldn't ask for because a lot of people normally say, oh, it's just for me, it's great that I can work in Germany already. And some German employers, unfortunately, know that. So they are at some point paying less for really talented and skilled people, even though they know they are these huge talents. And then they, and here we come back to the German language question. Um, they normally combine it with a German language uh, level. So some employers always say, if you want to climb the corporate ladder and earn more, you need to have a German level of B2. 
whether you need it or not, in my eyes, yeah, doesn't really matter. But that's then how they trick you. Obviously, it's a it's, it's a negotiation technique that they are using. But that's what I normally see. And I want you all, who because we are here with Tech Jobs Fair, I want you techs and engineers just simply to know you are so talented and just stick up for yourself and ask for what you want, okay? Because you are so talented and we need you. So... You can be out there. You can be loud. That is okay. So uh, moving further, I would like to just uh, add one thing here, right? Uh, the, uh, while ending the session, we will take some questions from uh, our comments also. So if anyone have any viewer have any questions, uh, you can directly, uh, you know, comment in your uh, uh, message box, right? So that we can, uh, we and Lisa try to answer, right? So Lisa, let's uh, move over next question. So mm -hmm. uh, as a, how uh, uh, foreign nationals can get jobs in Germany? Like, yeah. Uh, it's uh, just in, in, there is really one big thing where I always see a difference in whether you get invited to job interviews or not. And that's the first hurdle. So I normally divide the application process in two phases. The first phase is until the job interview and the second phase is after the job interview. So these are the two phases where you can adjust your strategy and that's key you need to have a good strategy when you are applying and the first thing is if you don't get a, invited to the job interview it means there is something wrong with your job application right maybe you don't um uh yeah you you're not really complying with the german standard uh and that could mean maybe you're not using a picture. Some companies don't want pictures anymore. But also what you need to be aware of is that um, we really like cover letters. And that is something that a lot of people don't pay attention to when I, what I see from my experience when they are applying from abroad. They prepare their CV, but not a cover letter. But here's the difference. The cover letter, or in German it's called Lebenslauf, um, is very factual. So you're talking about your skills and the different steps in your background, in your in your work history, and also your your studies, what you've what you've learned. Um, but the cover letter gives a gives a more personal approach, and that's a difference that a lot of people don't know. But that's actually where people can see: Can you communicate very well? Are you not just talking to me in bullet points? But can you? write an entire text and now the key here is every applicant always thinks they should write about themselves and yes that's true you want to say oh i'm so cool i'm i'm really good i'm very talented and i know so many languages like um, uh, programming languages and all of these things that's important but what is even more important is that you know about the company that you're applying for and that's what makes the difference to jump that first phase to get out of that first phase and get into the job interviews so you want to make sure that you know about the mission the vision and all the values of that particular company and use these words in your cover letter or Sometimes companies are not asking for cover letters. Obviously, then you don't have an opportunity to write a cover letter, which is fine. But nowadays, there are modern formats of CVs where you have some sort of like an intention or a little about me section. Use that for those keywords that you can connect with the values of that company. Okay, and write it in their style. So if they say our motto or our values are can do, sleeves up, all in, use these words. Use exactly those words. And then um, also what you can do. So as you can see here from our background, the tech jobs fair has very particular colors, right? You see orange, white, normal and black. So if I were to apply for the tech jobs fair, I would arrange my application documents in your colors. Yeah, because that's a psychological effect that you're doing there. You can use that. And the recruiter who is screening your application says, wait a minute, 
somehow these colors feel familiar. Maybe the recruiter doesn't even know that you are manipulating them. Yeah, but it's a great way of showing I've looked at in I've looked into your CI colors and I can use them. That's just an additional step. So and then normally if you have then passed it and go to the job interview, but you don't ever receive a contract after the job interview, that means that there is a, a, a mistake in that second phase. So you are saying something that is not correct or that is that, that the recruiter doesn't feel really comfortable with. And here my biggest advice would be, first of all, do that on your own tape yourself with your pitch so your applicants pitch so where you're from your background and so on and uh, and look at your recording look at how you how your face looks like do you look like oh i'm so scared or do you look like no i'm not i'm uncomfortable do you look like oh i really don't want to be here all of these things you can see from your own uh, recording and then from there Go on and ask a good friend of yours or ask a colleague of yours that you that you trust to, to ask you questions and give you some feedback on how you are reacting. Because most of the time, the recruiters are not even listening to what you're saying. They are already thinking, okay, what's the next question that I can ask to grill that applicant to find out uh, how I can push them? So they just simply want to see how you are dealing with stress and that's what job interviews are about. They want to see how you're dealing with stress, right? Obviously, you should also prepare for technical questions. And there are lots of websites where you can find questions for that. So here you can do that uh, to first record yourself, ask a friend, and also go through different questions that you can find online. So a great website for that could be, for example, Kununu. Maybe you've heard of that. There are a lot of uh, job interview questions that you can find and how to answer that. Okay. Great. So thank you for those insights and on all those uh, tips and tricks. So uh, moving, uh, moving further. So uh, I would like to add a big problem here. Uh, I mean, uh, I just want to ask. Like as a job seeker, uh, I saw like the, there are uh, multiple companies, you know, and uh, if you're looking for a job, you have to apply, you know, uh, uh, dozens of uh, job postings and also but not getting any response. So what kind of thing as a job seeker, like uh, uh, is there any platform like uh, or uh, where, you know, I, I mean, as a, as a job seeker, I have to apply to multiple platform and I have to send multiple emails, right? Yes. So how how we can uh, sort it out this problem yes so um that's also a very good question and it's a really big red flag in the entire job application process it's really annoying and it has been annoying for so many years that you have to apply for thousands of companies it feels like it because you're screening the different job boards you're applying you're writing applications you're sending the applications to companies and then you never hear anything back and um, you put all of this effort and energy into it, but you don't ever hear anything back. And I've seen a lot of people who then who are crushed by that, who crumble because they don't they think it's their personal problem. But you never know what is going on behind the scenes, why the company is not answering you. I mean, I've seen it from the HR point of view. I have sent uh, like rejection letters one and a half years later where I thought, why are we doing that? It does make sense to, to write an, a rejection letter one and a half years later. But simply we were stuck in work that much that we just simply couldn't deal with it. Yeah. So, so, but that's something that the job seeker never sees. But what is even more annoying is that you put in all this energy and this effort, and then you have to type in all the information again into their platform, right? So you're preparing your CV in a physical form on your, like a document, like a, a sheet on your computer, you upload it, and then uh, it doesn't really help because they say, okay, now enter again all of your school dates, enter again all of your work dates, and you do that for all of the companies that you're applying for. And really, employers are asking why they don't have skilled workers because the application process is so difficult and so annoying. Yeah, it does make sense. But there is a really cool solution and it's called higher tech talent. So here with this platform, it's really 
it's not designed just for the for for companies to find find great talent but it's a lot easier for the job seeker to once and for all enter their own data and then through the match will be matched with a company basically so it's just one and you can apply for as many applications as you want basically many jobs as are out there for your particular profile yeah so this is definitely what i would recommend to use um especially if you are in the tech and engineering field yeah tech it so so uh, that's really really helpful to use that platform and i have to be honest i haven't seen it in any other platform because the other platforms are still what i said before that you have to enter your data over and over and over again but you don't want to do that <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Lisa. Uh, so moving further, I think uh, uh, I mean question answers from viewers round also come, right? So let's uh, take some uh, uh, questions from our yes. viewers side. Uh, okay. Okay. So, Ramesh, question is here. Please share about electrical job market in Germany, and uh, which city is best for electrical sector? That's a good question, and I don't know. <laughs> Um, no, so basically, um, a lot of people are always approaching me with uh, special questions like that, like really precise for their for their job. I can just tell you that um, Germany in general is searching for skilled workers and electrical job. That could be anything. So you need to be, first of all, more precise and you need to come up with your own idea of what a great company looks like. And here, what I always recommend to do first is normally people are have a job in their field and if they are still abroad international in their, in their country, take a look at whether their own company has a plant a a site in germany as well and whether they can transfer internally that's the easiest way to do it but if they don't you have to do a little bit of work because you have to come up with the ideal company what are for example electrical companies that are interesting to you yeah an electrical i mean that could be anything you everything has electronic in it nowadays so um you really need to find out okay um what does this company stand for do i want to have like a job where i uh, where this company is more into sustainability or do you want to work with renewable energies do you want to work with um with a very local company this is up to you and then you can do your job search but i can tell you that much you will definitely find a job in the electrical job market <laughs> in that sector you will find a job it's just up to you how you define your ideal job okay i hope that helped ramesh yeah okay let's uh, move over next questions which is from molish and uh, he's asking uh, how to apply a job in germany the same question that we have covered <laughs> i'm having master degree from uk and having software engineer customer success experience in the current position perfect so, yeah. yes Yes, Malouche, thank you very much for that question. And um, first of all, it's really good that you have a master's degree from the UK because that's a lot easier to get accepted here in Germany. So there's nothing much that you need to do. You just have your master's degree and you can show the German employers. So for you as well, you first need to define do you want to work in a specific city? Do you want to work in a um, specific uh, company? Again, think about do you want to work in sustainability or anywhere else? You need to define what an ideal company looks like. But I can tell you, software engineering, you are searched for anywhere. And that could be anything. You could work in the banking field. You could work in a in a computer, in a tech startup. That's basically up to you. You also need to define, do you want to work in a company where there are like really steep hierarchies or do you want to have it more relaxed, some sort of like a startup where you get a lot of 
a work experience um, like on a very flat hierarchy level so that you have a lot more flexibility. Some people really love to be in a very steep hierarchy where the the basically the CEO tells every tells the manager what to do, the manager tells the tells the employee what to do. This is basically up to you what you need to find out. And here again, uh, a very good advice would be there is uh, every year a stepstone salary report that I recommend for you to all to download because here you get an overview of entire Germany for the different sectors. So here like software engineering and also for the different industries, whether that's banking, automotive, IT and all of these things. And you can find out in the different areas in Germany how much money you can earn. And that is always very helpful for people to make up their mind because for most of them, it's just, oh, I just want to come to Germany. But let me tell you, it's a big difference whether you come to Germany and live in Berlin or Munich or whether you are living in a very, very remote little village <laughs> and um, and basically don't have any uh, any connections. For some people, that's really cool. They want to live very remotely. Again, I don't know how you are as a person. You need to define that for yourself. Uh, I hope, Molish, uh, you got your answer, right? I hope so, so too. Moving further, <laughs> moving further, next question is from Christopher. Uh, oh, Christopher, yes. Hi, I know him. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, so let's take a look. If you want to get a job in project program management role in a technical field, is there an expectation that you must start in a lower level role first and work up? Or can an expert expect to be competitive in looking for management roles? Yes, definitely go for the management roles. If you have the experience, don't sell yourself lower than your level that you're at because they will obviously... That's what companies do, right? They want to lower their cost. They want to lower their budget. And that's why they tell you, you need to enter a lower level role. But why? You have the experience. You have the background. You've studied in that field. You are basically selling yourself for less. But you are still offering all of the knowledge and skills that you have. Why would you settle for less? That doesn't make any sense. So no, just because you are applying from abroad, from outside or from as an international in Germany, stick with your management roles. Yeah. And this can actually be very beneficial because it brings, as we call in Germany, new wind. Yeah. In German, neuer Wind. It would bring new wind into the company, basically like a spin-up and a new perspective. It's very, very good for the management uh, group as well to have an international uh, in, their, in their group as well. So I hope that helped. Don't settle for less. Nobody, no one of you. Yeah. So uh, great, uh, Lisa. So uh, unfortunately, we are running out of time. So <laughs> we have to end the session here. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Lisa, for joining this session and giving us such a deep insight to our viewers into job findings. And uh, I hope this insight will help job seekers to find their dream job in Germany. So Lisa, as mentioned, like uh, Tech Jobsphere uh, is also conduct a physical Tech Jobsphere in Berlin, Germany, right, Lisa? Yes, so exactly. Oh, yeah, that's something else that you should keep in mind. So if you guys are already in Germany, the Tech Jobs Fair is happening this year. So last year I was participating also as a guest speaker. And this year it's happening physically. So you can actually go to Berlin and meet everybody there. And that's even better. And a lot more career fairs are happening in physical, in the physical world again, which is really beautiful because you can connect with recruiters, with hiring managers on a deeper level. That's always a better opportunity. So yeah. Check out Tech Jobs Fair website and um, participate in the event in November in Berlin. So right. let's just take a look again. Uh, 10th of November. 10th of November right. in Berlin. Right. So that would be a physical one. And uh, everyone, those uh, job seekers who want to visit uh, the job fair, you just have to go to our website, techjobsfair.com, and uh, you can get your free tickets for the event. Right. Yeah. So that's all for today. 
thank you so much everyone for joining us today and so that is the end of the session see you all in our next session uh, till then be happy and keep smiling yes bye thank you very much for having me thank you thank you everyone